Hello family, welcome to church today. My name is Miracle. If you're joining us for the very first time, you are welcome. We're so glad you could join us. Let us know in the comment section where you're joining us from, or if it's your first time, write to connect at wototochurch.com. We would love to get in touch with you. Now we're still continuing our series on the family. So I hope you're ready today to learn from God's word. And our worship team is ready to usher us into the presence of God. So Get your dancing shoes on and let's praise Jesus. Put that wherever you are. Come on, let's join us and celebrate Jesus together. Come put your hands together like this. Come on. Hey. Come on, let's sing it out. Say, You are here. As we're lifting up your name, lifting up your name, you are here. Giving you the praise, giving you the praise The kingdom of God is released in this atmosphere hey. With freedom and breakthrough and victory are right here Come on, sing it out, we sing Cause where you are is where I wanna be In your presence There's no place I would rather be with you, Jesus, it's heaven on earth. Hey, come, on, come. On. It's heaven on earth. It's heaven on earth.
Only you are worthy. So we join with all creation and with the angels in the heavens and we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy are you, God Almighty. Only you are worthy of all our worship. Only you are worthy of all our praise.
every time when we come together and sing songs of worship and adoration to God, we then get to realize who God is. We start to see God for who He truly is to us. We start to realize that God is beyond our failures. God is bigger than our dreams, our hopes. God is beyond our disappointments in life. We start to realize that God has unlimited power. And when we look at the scriptures, one of the pictures that the Bible shows us of who God is, is that of a father. Father simply means one who sustains our source, the one who holds us up and supports us. And I know that where we are in life, we go through different things, different experiences, different scenarios play out in our lives. At this point, I want to invite you to your Father, just so you can lay before Him the burdens that you carry. Lay before Him the worries, the trials that you may be going through. The moments of life that you are experiencing. Just take a moment right now in worship and adoration to acknowledge that God is your sustainer. God is your source. God is your Father. And start to trust Him with what it is that is laying heavy on your heart. Take a moment right now and just start to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father, this morning we exalt you. We exalt you high above all our worries, all our cares, all our burdens. We exalt you, O oh God, beyond everything that we know. Because you alone are worthy of all our worship. You alone are worthy of all our praise. And as we come before you in prayer, acknowledging that you are more than we could ever think or imagine. We are asking that you will meet each and every single one of us, your children, at our different points of need. Supply for us. Provide for us. Heal. Sustain. Strengthen. Comfort us, O oh God. We pray that we shall experience your power in our lives right this very moment and as we continue in the service we pray that we shall experience miracles that we shall hear testimonies of breakthrough because we have called out to you and you have responded to us we give you thanks and praise in the mighty name of jesus we pray and everybody says amen 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 come on let's give god a clap offering right where you are it is such a great privilege to be in the presence of God. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to church. You may be in your living room, in your bedroom. <laughs> it could be in a microsite right where you are. You are welcome to church. Church is not an event we go to. Church is a family that we belong to. And if it's your first time joining us, we are glad that you could join us today for service. At Watoda Church, we celebrate Christ and we care for community. We are right at the beginning point of a brand new series. Last weekend, we had Pastor Calvin share God's word with us in regard to the brand new series, which is Family Matters. And what he handled was God's design for marriage. And today, we carry on in this series and uh, we're going to be looking at an exciting topic. I have the privilege of inviting my brother, my friend, Pastor 
Andrew Chimuli, who is going to share the Word of God with us. Come on, family. Let's welcome him as he brings God's Word to us today. Machato is a lot of things to a lot of people. We are a church that celebrates Christ and cares for community. We rescue Uganda's most vulnerable, raise Africa's future leaders, love and restore dignity to the forgotten. But to me, Watoto is my family. And right here is my mom. She raised me and my seven Watoto brothers and sisters here in this house. This isn't a building made of bricks, but it is a home made from love. I've completed university and now I'm a leader right here in Watoto, mentoring the next generation. My life would be very different without sponsors and partners from all over the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you for loving me and my family, Watoto. Hello, family. Welcome to the Word today. Andrew is my name. I'm one of the pastors here at Watoto Church. We are continuing with our series we started last week called Family Matters. You know, when families are healthy, communities are healthy, but also the nation is healthy. That's why as Watoto, we take off time the whole month to deal with family matters because we know that family is very important. Pastor Calvin last week preached a great sermon of God's design for marriage. And one of the key highlights there is marriage is between one man, one woman committed in a covenant relationship. And if you missed it, please go to our website. You'll be able to get that message. So today I want to bring you sermon number two. We are going to be dealing with overcoming sexual sin. Open your Bibles to John 8 from verse 1 to 11. We'll also read John 4. John 8 verse 1 says this. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again to the temple and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had sat her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they may have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus scooped down, wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone to her first. And again he scooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the least. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had risen himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go sin no more. Then the other portion we want to read together today is John 4, verses 9 to 18. This is what it says, verse 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, saying to Jesus, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? And are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst. But the water that shall give him will come in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, 
give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you speak truly. Father, we thank you that your word is powerful. Today we pray the entrance of your word will bring understanding in this topic of sexual sin. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, the world is grappling with pain as a result of deviating from God's plan for sex. And the result of deviating from God's plan brings guilt. It brings condemnation. It brings abortion. It brings children being born out of wedlock. It brings a lot of pain in society and divorce. And as a result of that is because mankind, you and I, when we deviate from God's plan, trouble is coming. And so we see sexual sin in our environment and the pain it causes. And families end up being destroyed. And so today I want to spend a few minutes looking at the Word of God and seeing how does the Word of God help us overcome sexual sin. The text we read today, it has two ladies who were involved in sexual sin. They were struggling. And then we have Jesus. And we see the response that Jesus gives them. So how do we overcome sexual sin? According to Jesus, how he dealt with it, he gives us two ways we can do this. Number one, Jesus extends grace and not condemnation. From the two stories, we have one lady caught in the act of adultery. We have another one that has five husbands. And even the husband she had was not hers. They had one thing in common. Both the ladies had emptiness inside. You see, we all have a void. And that void was not meant to be fulfilled by sexual desires. That void was meant to be filled by God. And so that void that we have, the void that these ladies had, they indulged into sexual sin. And you see, some of us, the way we fill this void is maybe alcohol, but others, pornography, others, you know, homosexuality, others, fornication, others, adultery, and all kinds of sexual activities. I want to tell you, that when we do such things, it leaves us worse. We never become better. We live worse than we were when we engulfed into sexual sin. I remember as a young man struggling with pornography. And it ate me up. I would be in my bedroom and I'm struggling. I'm wondering what should I do? And pornography led into living a morally um, bad life, a life that did not glorify God. But I thank God that in that mess, I met Jesus like these ladies. You see, on top of sexual sin living, you empty inside. It brings a lot of emotional pain. It brings a lot of disappointment, bitterness, shame. And as a result of that, we see that these two ladies were ostracized. They were empty. They were ashamed. And society decided to ostracize them. So what did Jesus do? In the midst of their pain and shame and denial, Jesus did not condemn them. Jesus extended grace. You see, when you're struggling with sexual sin, grace is the way, not condemnation. Listen to the word the Bible says, John 8, 10. When Jesus had risen himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She replied, or she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Jesus did not condemn both ladies. Instead, Jesus showed mercy and grace. You see, sexual sin comes with a lot of shame and many people hide because of that shame. And Jesus understood this, that these two ladies were ashamed, they were broken, they were empty. So instead of joining the multitudes to condemn them, Jesus extends grace to them. Because it's the grace of God that leads us to repentance. 
So you may be wondering, but pastor, if you extend grace, is Jesus saying that they should continue in sin? No. The grace that God was extending to them was so that he can love on them and fill the void that they were going through. In fact, the grace of God comes before change. When people experience the grace of God, that's where true change comes from. Paul reminds us in Romans 8, 1 to 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. We too need to act like Jesus. We need to always extend grace to people who are struggling with sexual sin. We should never be a part of the multitudes that are throwing stones, that are condemning. You see, when people are struggling with sexual sin, what they need is the grace of God to meet them where they are. Christ was loving on them because Christ wanted to fill the void that they were going through. I remember the story we have just read in John 4, 13. This is what it says. Jesus answered and said to her, the woman at the well, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I'll give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. We see Jesus inviting this lady to receive the river of life, Jesus himself. When we totally surrender to God and allow him to come in our lives because of the grace he has given us, we will not live in habitual sexual sin. Condemnation never changes people. It is the grace of God that changes people. I want to tell you this. Condemnation is Satan's weapon to keep you defeated. But the grace of God is God's weapon for your victory. You may be out there and you're struggling and you're hiding. I want you to come out. Let the grace of God bring you to repentance. Let the grace of God receive you. God loves you and he doesn't condemn you. But what I love about the grace of God, it not only receives you the way you were, it never leaves you the same. The grace of God will draw you closer to him. But it's so great to leave you the same. It will change your life. And so number one, we see the way Jesus dealt with this. He extended grace. Number two, secondly, grace empowers us to change. After Jesus had extended grace to these ladies by saying, I don't condemn you, Jesus did not stop there. Instead, he continued. And this is what he said. Verse 11, she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. <laughs> Friends, that's a great statement of saying go and sin no more. But go and sin no more is impossible if you try to do it on your own. In fact, I know. When I was struggling with pornography, I tried to do it on my own. I tried to do certain things, self-will and read these books. I failed. I continued in the same circle. Same circle. So when God says, go and sin no more, it is only possible to go and sin no more through the grace of God. You see, the grace of God draws you near to him and the grace of God empowers you to change. Paul writes to his son Titus 2 verse 11 to 12. And this is what Paul says. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. So what do we learn from this text that Paul is writing to us about the grace of God empowering us? Two things when it comes to sexual sin. Number one, the grace of God gives us the power to say no to sexual sin. Paul says that this grace that God gives us empowers us to say no to worldly passions. I have never seen someone die because of not having sex. And so the grace of God empowers us to say no. I love verse 12. It says, it teaches us 
The key word is teachers. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion. So this requires us, you and I, to depend on the grace of God in this process. You see, many people say, you know, pastor, this is how I was born. The reason I'm struggling with masturbation and pornography and adultery and fornication is because this is where I was born. Others say, you know, God's grace is available, so if God wants to set me free from this, he will do it on his own timing. I believe that's a lie from the enemy. I believe that is far from the truth of God's word. I believe that this grace that helps us to say no to sexual sin is available to us, but we need to collaborate with God. There is God's part giving us the grace. There is our part, and our part is to receive, to allow his teaching so that we deal with this. So what are some of the things we do to say no to sexual sin? A couple of things. Control what you watch. Many of us are struggling in sexual sin, you know, homosexuality, adultery, fornication, bestiality. The reason we are struggling is because of the things we expose our eyes to. I remember Job saying, I've made a covenant with my God not to set my eyes on lustful things. What are you watching? Guard your mind. Guard what you watch. Set boundaries on relationships. As a pastor, and I've pastored for many years, I never counsel ladies alone or in closed meetings. Why? Because I'm setting boundaries. The environment you're in. Today, young people are throwing parties, and in those parties, there's a lot of immorality. Shy away from such things. Put boundaries on your social media platforms. Many of us are on social media, and we are abusing those platforms. You know, the phone is smart. I pray that your head is also smart in terms of seeing what you watch and what you don't watch. When we put all those boundaries, we're trying to say no to sexual sin. You see, Paul writes to the church and he says in Galatians 5, 34, those who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. So we belong to him. And the grace of God helps us to say no to such worldly passions. But the second part of how it helps us, how the grace of God helps us, the grace gives us the spirit power. The grace gives us spirit power. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says this. Now, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, the Bible says there is freedom. So God, in his own wisdom, gives us the power of the Holy Spirit to help us. His grace gives us the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I have met people in my pastoral work who have put the boundaries there, who have tried to keep clean, but they're still bound. They're still bound in this enemy called sexual sin. I believe that such people need deliverance from that such uh, perversion. They need deliverance. And how do you get deliverance? There is the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm grateful. The good news is, is that Jesus so graciously left us with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is that power that breaks the yokes and the chains that have held you. And so some of you, you're seated there, you're listening in and you're wondering, can I get free? Yes, you can. The power of the Holy Spirit can set you free because the Holy Spirit is here to break chains. I love what the scriptures say in John 8, 36. So he, the son, sets you free. You will be free indeed. Freedom comes through the power of the Holy Spirit that the grace of God gives us. So as I conclude, I want to remind you this amazing truth. That Jesus does not condemn you. Rather, he extends grace. And the reason why he extends grace is so that he can fill the void that is inside you. His grace draws you near, but also his grace never leaves you the same. The grace of God has appeared to all people unto salvation. It empowers you so that you may be set 
free. So that you can say no to sexual sin. So that you can receive the power of the Holy Spirit that breaks the shackles of fornication, of adultery, of homosexuality, of pornography, all these sexual sins. And so as I conclude, you may be wondering, Pastor, even with all my struggles of sexual sin, like these two ladies we've seen in Scripture, can God still use me? I have good news for you. I'm one of those testimonies. I struggled in my early years. I messed up. But God in his own wisdom, in his own grace, he extended grace to me. A man who was addicted to porn and an immoral life, God changed my life. But he not only changed my life, he extended grace to me and restored me. I've been married for over 10 plus years. Beautiful woman. Have two beautiful daughters. Listen, God not only sets you free from sexual sin, but he restores you to even a better ministry. When you read the woman at the well, John 4, the story did not end there. The story ended. The woman went back to her community and she shared the good news of what had happened to her. And she was one of those evangelists in her community. Her community changed. Jesus used her to change the entire community. Listen, God can restore you. God can make you even much better than you are. So what do we need to do, Pastor? We need to go before him and ask him to forgive us of our sin, of sexual immorality, that sexual sin, but also to ask him to restore us. So today I want to pray with you. Wherever you are out there, you're struggling with sexual sin. I want to pray with you. It starts by coming to Jesus to fill that void. It's the grace of God that changes men. Let's pray. I want to pray for you who is struggling in sexual sin. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man or woman that right now is struggling with sexual sin. They're struggling with pornography. They're struggling with adultery and fornication, homosexuality, oh God. Lord, they're struggling with lustful thoughts. Lord, I pray that the Spirit of the living God today will grip their hearts, will break the chains of lust off their lives. That, Lord, they will live a lives that are redeemed and restored for your glory. Lord, I pray that every guilt will turn away in the name of Jesus. Father, like you set me free many years ago, I pray for deliverance upon my brothers and sisters, that today they will behold freedom, that they will know that Jesus, you are the only true satisfaction, not sex perversions, not sexual sin. You are the true, true inner feeling. It is you who fills us in Jesus' name. Amen. But also before I end, I want to pray for those you have heard the word. Maybe you're struggling with sexual sin, but you have never received Jesus. I want to pray that Jesus will come in your heart. When this lady at the well received Jesus, everything changed. I want to pray for you so that you receive Jesus. Father, I thank you for every man or woman out there that is listening and watching, who desires to receive you today as Lord and Savior. Lord, your grace is sufficient. So I pray that today is the day of salvation. I ask that your Holy Spirit will draw them to yourself. I thank you and I honor you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. I hope you have an incredible day today as you enjoy the Word of God and live a life free from sexual sin. Bye. Thank you, Pastor Andrew, for preaching God's Word. I have been blessed. You are such a wonderful communicator. Now, if you gave your life to Christ, congratulations. Welcome to God's family, and we would like to get in touch with you. So, write to us, connect at watodochurch.com. Congratulations once again.
And now, Watero family, it's time for us to give. Are you ready to give? Now, remember, we don't give because we want to get back from God. We give simply because God has blessed us so much. God is a gracious giver and He gave us His very best gift, Jesus Christ. And as Christians, we return our tithes and offerings to say, thank you, God, for loving us. But also, we give because we are passionate about God's mission. We give so we can reach more people with the most wonderful message in the whole world. And now, I want to pray for you. Get your offering right now and let's pray together. Now, Father, thank you so much for the giving of your people. Thank you because we are returning from what you've already given to us. And we want to say thank you for the blessings that we are enjoying today as your children. But also we want to give because we love you, because we are passionate about your kingdom. Now, Lord, would you bless the giver? Bless the gift. In Jesus' name I do pray. And everybody said, Amen. And here are the many ways that you and I can give. You can give using mobile money, direct bank transfer, or any banking agent within your community. But also, if you live close to any of our celebration points, you can simply walk over and slip your cash offering into one of the gift boxes. Now, for those using mobile money, let me walk you through the steps you would take. For MTN, dial star 165 star 3 hash and the merchant code is 148775. That is 148775. And for Airtel, you dial star 185 star 4 star 9 hash and the business number is 700,000. That is 7 followed by 5 zeros. For more giving options, check out our website watotochurch.com forward slash give. But you can also use your phone to scan the QR code which will take you straight to the different giving options. And for your Watoto Child sponsorship, dial star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. Then enter the merchant code WCCM in capital letters. The merchant code is WCCM in capital letters. Now as a reference, type the sponsor's full name only. Fill in the amount to be paid and finally fill in your MTN mobile money pin. Thank you for your generosity.
Thank you so much, family, for joining us for church today. I hope you have been blessed by that amazing word from Pastor Andrew. If you'd love to rewatch it or you'd love some of our previous ones, you can find them on our website, watotochurch.com, or our Facebook and YouTube channels. Remember, our in-person services are happening and all you have to do is show up early. You don't have to book your seat anymore. If you'd love to pray with somebody or for counseling, call the numbers appearing on your screen right now or write to connect at watotochurch.com. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms so you can keep up with everything that's happening in and around church. Also, listen to 104.1 Power FM for uplifting programming designed just for you and your family. I hope you have a great week ahead. God bless you.